Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the We Are CCA podcast. Uh, we are uh, today. We're talking to two representatives from Cargill, uh, Marlene Ramirez and Daye Martinez. And uh, Cargill is a company that was actually founded in 1865 uh, as a grain warehouse in Iowa. Um, over the last 150 years, Cargill has grown uh, to now employ over 155,000 employees across 70 countries. So on this episode, we talk to our guests about a number of topics, um, an overview of Cargill and sort of what they're about as an organization. We also talk about entry-level employment opportunities with Cargill. So for those of you who are interested in going straight into the workforce, uh, we talk about some of those opportunities. Then we also talk about sort of how to climb the corporate ladder and some strategies that you can employ to uh, benefit yourself once you enter the workforce. So uh, we really hope you enjoy this episode. We had a great, uh, great time recording it. Uh, the guests were fantastic and, uh, you know, enjoy. All right, go ahead now. Yep, you're good. <laughs> it's all good. So um, I know that we were talking about this before, Jake, but just for everyone's uh, awareness, and I know, Daya, of course, you know this, but uh, Cargill is a huge corporation, uh, have been in, in business for 156 years, uh, since 1865, um, just really, it's one of the biggest companies in, in the world and in the, in the U.S., uh, started by the William Wallace Cargill. And now it's just a huge corporation that's in food and agriculture. So all the way from turkey to beef to grain for animal feeding, we have salt mine, tech, uh, textile uh, locations as well. And it's just a huge corporation. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of opportunities throughout the world. So I always tell people when I'm doing onboarding, if you close your eyes and you have a globe and you kind of just put your finger somewhere, Cargill's probably going to be there. It, it's, it's just a huge corporation with a lot of opportunities. Um, in Pennsylvania alone, we have 14 locations, and the location where Daya and I sit is in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, so in the northeast of the of the state, about an hour and a half from Harrisburg or so, but just a huge corporation. And um, when I was, I graduated college, and I was just looking for an entry-level job, and I think I felt like in my area, there weren't a lot of opportunities for me to join an organization to be successful and I was kind of like well you know I'll take a job here to just get started and I'll probably I'll leave this town behind like I'm leaving <laughs> uh, but so I just went on like online I found like a an entry-level admin role and I applied and they called me had the interview and I was fully like okay this is going to be like a tiny like little factory there's going to be like a dark office no windows and like a bunch of paperwork I, like it's just going to be so tiny and then I came here and I was just like blown away uh with the organization the opportunities and how big the HR family was in my state with all the uh, 14 locations and then I found out that there were other states all over the world and uh, I've just really opened up my eyes to a lot of opportunities um, within the company um, if I wanted to stay in HR if I wanted to go to R&D uh, if I wanted to go to marketing to engineering to continuous improvement to operations if I there's people that do uh, diversity equity and inclusion people that specifically focus on recruiting people that are um, in research and development the people that work in labs with me and people that work in the supply chain, like really any function that you can think of, it exists, like 90% sure it exists within Cargill because of our size, the years of experience. So um, I was able and, and privileged enough to, through a lot of hard work, just get through uh, a couple of different roles in HR and recruiting. Uh, so I was a, a recruiter here in, in Hazleton, and I actually got to travel to a lot of locations within the U.S. to help onboard recruiters, to look at efficiencies within the hiring, help with marketing and outreach for other plants, and just really open up my eyes as well. And when I was in that recruiter role, I got the pleasure to hire Zendaya, who started out um, in, in production. Mm -hmm. So um I don't know if maybe you want to talk a little bit about that journey, um, about that was like, and how hopefully I was nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <clears throat> thank you, Marlene. So I was hired yeah. 2018 as a knifer. Um, I remember she interviewed me, and it was like a nice interview. We went over like um, the job title, what I will be doing. So I started as a knifer. Can you guys hear me right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of have my yeah. mask over my mouth. Um, mm -hmm started as a knifer and it was like a, a a different experience for me. I never worked in a 
meat facility like this or um so it was different I it was a good experience we'll say as a knifer and along the way like a couple months later like three months later I became um a line lead so I was it was a privilege to you know I I think I proved myself that I was a hard worker and I became a line lead. Sure, after that, like a year later, um, I also work in continuous improvement. So we, it's more of a, um, you want me to explain what that is? Like, what do we do as a CI? Yeah, or, yeah of course, of course. Um, as a continuous improvement, we do a lot of the um, pacing, um, efficiency reports, and audits on on the production plan. Um, that will help us like become better, you know. Mm-hmm. And after that, I would say I, I became a supervisor. Now, only been in this role position for like a month and a half now. And yeah, <laughs> what's 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 the experience been like in moving from a from you know, a knifer to, you know, a, a line, uh, what was the, the second? Position? A line lead, yeah. Line lead to supervisor. What is the, what is, what has the experience been like transitioning? It comes, with, it comes with great responsibility. And I would say they helped me grow as a person. It helped me grow in an industry to learn the different things that as a knifer, you just work production, you you just knife right but mm-hmm. then as a line lead you in charge of a line you're in charge of making sure that we are keeping our staff safe that we're producing that i'm aware of my lines and now as a supervisor is a even greater responsibility for the better because i'm learning a lot more about myself also how to engage how to stay focused on with the staff and with the plan i'm learning all these metrics that um, are really good for, you know? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the things that I'm curious about is, I mean, Cargill being such a, a big company and sort of, you know, being worldwide, what is, I've never worked for a company like that. I, what is the experience like? Is it is it intimidating to think that, you know, I'm part of this big giant corporation is it something where you feel like oh, I'm just a small little cog in the wheel? Like, what what has the experience been like working for you know such a large uh, corporation that hires so many people? Right, um, not intimidating. I would say it's it's a job that gives you opportunities. It's a good place to work where if you work hard, you determine and you're you're focused in your job you could grow and like Marlene says she had different roles in the company as well so it I would say it is a great company to work for to grow as a person in the industry or you know and to gain knowledge I would say like overall it's like you know like it comes with great responsibilities like I said but it's a place where they give you opportunities to to be a better you and to grow within the company yeah. And I think not many places have that, you know, out there. Um, so I'm proud of, you know, where we are. Yeah, and yeah. maybe because it is so big, there are more opportunities for those things, for you to sort of find your path and your, your place yes. within, within it. Yeah. 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 yeah there, Kelly, what's your experience? There are a, what was that? What's your experience been like so far? Yeah, I think, uh, like Daya said, uh, a lot of growth for opportunities and um, just a lot of training and development uh, within Cargill. I know locally we have local training. We have um, supervisors and line leads that see potential in people, kind of like happened for Daya. Someone approached her and asked about opportunities. So there's a lot of people that that provide mentorship and provide resources. We have digital learning, we have um, in-house learning, uh, some of our HR group or our learning and development, that's another function within Cargill that does virtual training. Um, We have a lot of things with tuition reimbursement. I'm actually in the process of doing that now. Um, I went back to school for my master's and I know that's something that within my team, it was was encouraged by my manager and my function and obviously with the financial assistance that assistance that always helps but um there's just a lot of opportunities to get trained um and you know official training like a lot of companies have uh digital learning leadership training training of on the job but then also 
there's opportunities for mentorship, whether that's official mentorship programs that you can join, um, uh, whether they have ones for, for women, for example. There's a, a network of empowering women. There's a me- mentorship program for that. Um, and for different groups, there's and then there's unofficial mentorship, people that you just meet you connect with uh or you feel you feel like they see you you feel like you look up to them and sometimes people just offer hey i want to be part of your journey is it okay if we connect and it's i know people that i've met five years ago and now they live on the other side of the world and i still talk to them so yes it is a very big company but there's a lot because it is so big there's a lot of tools to get trained and there are a lot of gracious people that have been where you are and offer your their support and are there for you on an official capacity as in, hey, here are the tools, here are the things that you could do to grow, but also I'm here and you're never alone and I'm able to partner with you and provide that support. And I think for my cargo career, that's always what it's been like. Um, like Daya said, working hard and raising your hand that you want to learn more and um, being vulnerable, like, hey, this is a challenge um, and, and leaning on the people around you to do that. So that, that's been my journey as well. Wondering, going back to Dai's experience, you know, where she started off kind of at the most entry level position you could have and now has progressed up very nicely. And it seems like in a quick kind of a quick pace, too. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, what what do companies look like, look for in the employees to kind of say, you're somebody who should be moved up to a, a lead and then moved on to quality and then up to supervisor? Like, what do, what do you look for in an employee? You're on mute, Daya. I'm sorry, that's because there was some noise behind me. <laughs> I would nice. say one of the um, greatest things that um, we see in people is someone who has leadership. If you show that you have leadership, that you determine that you're focused on learning new tasks, um, that is something that we look for in, in, in people. Like we still have knifers now that we look up to them and we see great opportunity in them. So we always like observing our, our staff for many reasons, you know, because we wanna acknowledge those who are working as hard as we was working at one point to also grow because it feels great when you go home and you say, I, I achieved something different than I did yesterday or now I'm in a new role. But that all comes with determine, determination, like I said, focus, being responsible, being a great leader. And a great leader is showing by examples, you know? You mm-hmm. gotta lead by example, so. You know, I, I've heard, and both of you have mentioned it, you know, about working hard, hard work. Um, what? What is, what is that? Like when you say, well, you just got to work hard. Well, what does that, how does that manifest itself? Like, how do you see that in a, in an employee or, or somebody that you supervise? Like, well, he's a hard or he or she is a hard worker. Well, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? What is that? What is that in a person? How do you, like, what sort of behaviors do they model that sort of show you that they are a hard worker? Mm, that's a good, very good question. I, I love uh, what you said, Daya, leading by example. Um, and I think about treating others how you want to be treated, um, being open to being open to learning, to admitting mistakes, and raising your hand to do more. Um, and if you're struggling working with your team to, to, to say that. So I think being determined to, um, to show up every day um to raise your hand if you need help to raise your hand to bring up issues and even better if you come up with with solutions for those two and treating other people how you want to be treated right and that's one of the the missions and one of the models for card deal is to put people first and like daya said leading by example to me looks a lot like that putting other people first and being agile to raise your hand, to be vulnerable, to ask questions. Um, and, a, and a lot of times that's being vulnerable to say, hey, I don't know, or I need help. Um, and I think that that is part of leading by example, because if, if you show up and you're, and you're struggling or you have a question, chances are other people are as well. Um, so leading through that example of showing up every day, giving it your best, 
And when you can't, or you don't feel sure about yourself, um, raising that up and, and treating others uh, with leader, with, not with leadership, with dignity and respect. But I don't know what you think, Daya, because you have a different lens too, right? No, I completely agree with you. I will also say that when we mean work hard, it does not always mean physically hard. You know, like you could work hard and improving um, your work, your, your, but that not only necessarily physically, um, you know, you could come up with good ideas that could improve the, the workplace, the area, the staff, like your surroundings. Um, so it's just like, like we said, overall, leading by example, it's in that category of working hard, but not only physically, you could also work hard mentally to improve, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, th I think that I, you hit the nail on the head for me because like, well, we hear we hear that a lot from I, I want somebody who's a hard worker well I mean everybody wants mm -hmm. an employee that every you know everybody wants the employee to be hard working right um right. and everybody you ask you know in an interview I'm sure says well I'm a hard worker right it's it's how do you quantify that how do you see that how does that manifest itself in behavior mm -hmm. and I don't think for me I don't think it's always about somebody being busy right mm -hmm. it's not about like I work hard because I'm busy for eight hours or for my entire shift. Sometimes efficiency is good too, right? We want, we want employees and we want our workers to be efficient in what they do, confident in what they do, uh, very capable in what they do. But then in that time where, you know, maybe they're not managing a task, they're coming up with ideas to innovate, right? Like you talked about, Dai, what, what like in ways to improve processes, uh, ideas on how to, um, you know, better manage the shift or, you know, if we, if we position people here, maybe it'll make a little bit of difference in, in our efficiency rate. Um, you know, I think it would be great to have, have this, at, you know, on the line or, you know, for us at, at CCA, maybe it's, Hey, I, I have this great idea for a new program to get students involved with career readiness. Right. So it's not necessarily always about just like being busy. I think people mistake, that for hard work sometimes mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're working that hard maybe you don't need to maybe you haven't figured mm -hmm. out how to be efficient with your work how to be mm -hmm. um you're just working hard because you're not efficient you're not you're not necessarily managing your time well right and i think you hit the nail on the head for me it was all right i, I want somebody not only who gets their stuff done right and get, man, is able to manage their tasks but then in that extra time thinks about ways to make things improve processes around here. So I, I, I agree with you 100%, 100%. I, I really like that point for sure. And I think, I think our students, you know, they hear that too. Like you gotta be a hard worker, gotta be a hard worker. And it's like, well, does that mean I have to do like in a, in an educational setting? Does that mean I have to be like nose in my books for six hours every day? Or if I can manage it in four and have free time to explore other things, does that mean I'm not a hard worker? Well, no, that just means, you know, you worked hard, were efficient, and you were able to do some additional things. So um, it's not always about just being busy and staying busy. It's about, you know, using that time wisely and really trying to use that, use that as a way to impact your surroundings, your environment, your community, your work, your work environment, whatever it might be. So I really like that point. Um, yeah. Ian, did you have a, I thought you had a question. There. Well, yeah, I've been thinking here. I mean, I was thinking um, like, die, like, I mean, I can see, I can see your background here. Um, and I'm going knife and I'm kind of going like you're, so you're, and you said also, you're, you know, you're cutting meat and I'm going probably a lot of people, I don't know if this is true necessarily, but I would imagine maybe recruiting people to come work and cutting meat, probably a little bit challenging. Um, and I bet you a lot of people have a lot of mis misconceptions about what it's like to work in a, facility like yours, um, because I'm also thinking too, I'm seeing, you know, a lot of safety. I mean, your facilities probably you could eat off of them because you have to keep high standards. Maybe you shouldn't eat off of them, but you know, th things are a lot cleaner than you mm -hmm. might, maybe they were 150 years ago when it started, you know, the, the pro, you know, just so could you kind of like maybe explain like where you're at, like what it looks like, what it like maybe like what a day looks like, um, you know, maybe some of the misconceptions um, or things you might find surprising. Right. So, like, um, I remember as a knifer, 
it wasn't so scary because be, prior to even becoming an effort, you go through safety trainings, you got to get JTP, um, basically like become aware of where are you going into. They're not just going to throw you on a on a table and expect you to start cutting meat with no, with no prior trainings to. So I remember like when I first started, like one of my first days, that was one of the first things they give you. Also, we wear proper PPE. So we wear like um, knife and um, PPEs and arms and um, like metal sleeves. It's just to like keep us safe. So I knew from the beginning, okay, this is a safe environment. I could work here and still go home in one piece. And it was, I would say it was like well, well managed, like the way, you know, they they place you on to start work, you know, as a new hire. Yes, they might get afraid at the beginning or think like what is going on, but it, the good thing it comes with some trainings prior to that. Um, so I would say overall that, you know, that's something that we do here to make, to ensure that we keep our staff safe at all times, you know, and not just knifers, like other positions that we also have on the plan. Um, it's the same way, train prior to um, starting the position to, I don't know if that answered your question. I could probably use some of those metal gloves. Uh, I'm, I'm an avid outdoorsman and I also, my, my family uh, has, has, part of my family lives on a farm and we do some of our own processing. And uh, I probably could use uh, some, some, some of those metal gloves for safety. So if you get any, if you have any extra pairs, man, extra I'll give you my home address. You can just ship me a pair of them. <laughs> um, so Marlene, Marlene, two, four, um, for students who are, are getting ready to graduate and, you know, are not looking uh, at going to college or looking to enter the workforce right away, where can they find opportunities at Cargill uh, is, you know, whether it be a website or whatever, where can they find opportunities at Cargill and, and find out more about what, what might be available? Yeah, so right on our uh, Cargill website, so careers.cargill.com, um, uh, there's a whole section of openings, not just here in Pennsylvania, but all over the world. So people go on to Cargill's website. Uh, it talks about what we do, where we do it, how we do it, as far as our products and services. Uh, but right on our website, they can go on to our openings and look at open positions, uh, in, whether in production and continuous improvement, um, even within a support, so administrative or clerical positions that are within certain functions that someone maybe doesn't have um, a college degree, but they're like, hey, I'm willing to uh, work uh, my way up. I want to work and I want to learn. That's certainly something that they could do. And right on our website, there are a ton of op openings um, and they can they can apply. And then we have a recruiting team that goes through our applications and and talk to candidates. They answer um, any questions that they might have about the company, about the process. That can be really overwhelming at first if it's the first time applying into a job or right after um, graduating. So they have recruiters that go through that process. And then um, we have then people at the location that talk to the employee and go through that process. So that that um, point that Daya was mentioning with training and safety starts at the beginning. From the first time you, you click uh, submit application, you get communications, for, uh, an email, a phone call on the process and what to expect next. Um, and, and that process starts there. But it all starts on our on our website through our careers section. And we'll make sure to include uh, the link to that in our show notes so that everybody can find it and access it directly um, and probably post it on our job board too. I know we have not only students, but we do have families. Um, you know, the times are what the times are and, and uh, people yeah. are, uh, there are people that are looking for work. So, you know, some of yeah. our, our caretakers and, and parents may be looking for, looking for employment or looking for a change in employment. So we'll, we'll post that uh, on our job board as well. So really appreciate yeah. Um, your time today to, to come in. Dai, thank you so much for coming in. I know uh, thank you. Kind of right, caught you right in the middle of your shift, didn't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we really a little late, but... Well, that's all right. We really yeah. appreciate the time and uh, really excited to uh, you know get these opportunities um, in front of our, our students and families. So thank you so much for everything. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You guys no, go ahead, Daya. Oh, no, I was just going to say thank you for having us. Um, thank you.
Absolutely. Well, thank yeah, you. thank really you for having it. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no problem. Yes, if you um if, if you have your students listen um and enough if people have an interest to come visit here, we're always have our our uh, metaphorical arms open, our doors are open for any tours or questions or any kind of events that you want to be more pinpointing uh, uh pinpointed around positions, functions, or things like that. We're happy to do that, whether that's virtual or um, something that is in person, of course, COVID safe. So just appreciate your time and thank you for allowing us to, to be here today. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, All right. have thanks, a good day. Thanks Bye-bye. a lot. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks How to the listeners. Going? Thank you so much. And remember that we are CCA.